Tamil Cipollone. Mr Speaker, we are highly opposed, as you would have heard from my former colleagues who have spoken not just from the Labor Party but also from the Green Party and New Zealand First, um, with the fact that the government has made the decision to put this through urgency. We have been trying to get some urgency over the housing issue for at least the last two years, Mr Speaker, and we haven't got any urgency on things that matter, including, can I just mention, the issue of homelessness, where we tried to get the government to agree to do a cross-party inquiry into this very important issue, but instead have had to do it in partnership with the Greens and with the Māori Party because the government didn't see a need for that to be urgent. But here we are today considering something in urgency, basically because Nick Smith again has made a shambles of the housing situation. And Mr Speaker, I just want to say, and I've been yelling it out um, from the back benches over here, that actually I think Nick Smith will go down in history as the worst housing minister that New Zealand has ever had. And what a legacy, what a legacy, Mr Speaker, for him to leave here. Mr Speaker, it is, it is part of a string of fiascos that, that pass for a housing policy under the minister, and yet we still have to listen to that government every time they stand up in the House say that they have a comprehensive housing package. There is no comprehensive housing plan that the national government have going on. The plan, the only plan that New Zealand needs from the national government is a commitment to building houses. We don't need a pipeline. We don't need a consent because we can't live in a pipeline and we can't live in a consent. We need actual houses, Mr Speaker, and we haven't been given them so far. So while Labor would vote for the first part, um, extending the housing accords law here, we think it's untenable actually to push the second part with changes to the Public Works Act through all stages under urgency. If both parts, as we said earlier, are included in this bill, then we can't vote for this bill. And actually, I think my colleague Phil Twyford did put up an amendment um, trying to split the bill, but that has not been supported. My understanding is that it hasn't been supported by the national government. So easy. We could so easily support part of this. We just can't support the second part. And so it would be so easy for the minister just to split it in two so at least he can get some consensus in the House for part of what he's trying to do. But we can't commit to the second part because we do believe there needs to be some public scrutiny on that, and particularly with respect to what we're dealing with there, and that is basically changes to the way in which the Public Works Act applies. I want to just talk a little bit about um, where I've seen that um, specific part of the Public Works Act apply to my own electorate, and that's with the Waterview Connection. So we know that as part of the Waterview Connection, a whole lot of properties were purchased as part of the Public Works Act from Housing New Zealand um, and also private houses uh, so that that particular motorway could be built. And then in the end, actually, a whole lot of them weren't required. Um, you know, as New Zealanders, we can have peace of mind that actually the first place that was, or the, the first port of call in terms of offering those houses um, for purchase back was actually to Housing New Zealand, because they had sold them as part of the Public Works Act um, in the first place. Unfortunately, in that situation, Housing New Zealand did not purchase the houses back. They should have. Housing New Zealand acted as if there was no need for further housing or to recoup that housing, um, and then they ended up going up for private sale. But we know if there was a responsible government, then that measure is actually a very sensible measure to have in place. It wasn't required for the roading project. It should have gone straight back to Housing New Zealand. Housing New Zealand had the opportunity to purchase it back. Unfortunately, in that situation, they didn't. But I'm happy at least that safeguard was in place. And I don't want it to be messed with, particularly given that we haven't had any time to actually scrutinise what's being proposed here by the national government. In fact, as some of my colleagues have pointed out, it doesn't seem like the national government have actually had time to scrutinise what's in front of them themselves. Um, in fact, Nick Smith seems a little bit confused about what is actually in this bill. Um, and we're concerned, actually, that perhaps the way in which Nick Smith has communicated this to his cabinet is slightly misleading. But we, given that this is going through urgency, won't have the opportunity to scrutinise it to the extent that we need to. Mr Speaker, earlier um, um, people that have been on their feet on this side of the House have talked about some of the issues that we're facing with respect to housing. And actually, you know, we've made it really 
clear that this is a priority for uh, Labour and opposition and Labour when we're in government, Mr Speaker. And I just want to say that it has been really disconcerting to see the response that we've got from the national government on a number of issues, particularly let's start with the fact they deny there's a housing crisis in the first place, and then yet we get responses back to them like I got back from the Minister of Social Housing that states it takes 155 days for them to house someone who's homeless. 155 days to actually house someone who is homeless, living in their car, living in a garage, living under a bush somewhere, and it takes that government 155 days to house them. Mr Chair, we've I've had difficulties, Mr Speaker, difficulties even getting a definition out of the national government with respect to what is homelessness. And in fact, when I ask the Minister for Social Housing what the definition for, so for homelessness was, I get a response um, the day that the, res the response is due saying that they need more time to be able to provide that answer. More time to be able to provide a definition for homelessness? We just have to wonder what is the criteria that we're working under? Does the government even know what's going on? And then we hear uh, through a University of Otago study that there are approximately 41,000 plus people who are homeless in this country and the national government says that they don't believe that figure, that that figure's not correct. Oh, actually, I think I just heard Nick Smith say that that figure's crap. Well, actually, order, Nick Smith... Order, order, order. I, I probably should have called the member up, but I don't want to repeat it back and forth. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, but actually, um, Mr uh, Speaker, it, we see it every day in our electorate offices, particularly those of us who live in electorates that have um, people who are living on lower incomes, Mr Speaker. As my colleague Jenny Salis has said before, not just those who are on beneficiaries, although we are concerned about those people who are homeless, but also a growing number of working poor who cannot afford to put a roof over the heads of their family and are living in cars, Mr Speaker. And that's concerning to us, but what's really concerning is that it doesn't seem to be concerning to the national National government. Uh, Mr Speaker, this bill, as I said earlier, is another step in the shambles that has been the government's housing accords. It demonstrates yet again the government's incompetence on housing. The government was well aware that some of the special housing areas could lose their ability to continue under the new Auckland Unitary Plan before the housing accords legislation was even passed, and yet now they are pushing through legislation with only 10 days to go before D-Day. This could have been considered in a more responsible way, but the government haven't thought forward, they haven't been organised, and here we go again in the chaos that is the national government's supposed comprehensive housing plan. Uh, Mr Speaker, the housing courts have failed to deliver new housing, with only just over 1,000 houses actually completed in Auckland after three years, yet the government now proposes to extend them for another three years. They have also been a goldmine for land bankers. I think my colleague Martima Davidson was talking about this before, with only 57 of the 154 special housing areas actually having building consents in them so far. If the government was serious about delivering more housing, it would actually adopt Labour's, Labour's Kiwi build um, to build a plan to build 100,000 affordable joke. houses. It's not a joke, it a joke. when a political a party joke. has a plan to build more joke. houses in the midst of a housing crisis, Nick Smith. That's not the joke. The joke is that that minister refuses to listen and acknowledge that there is a housing crisis in the country, this country. That is the joke. The joke is that that minister has brought this bill to the House in urgency because he wasn't organised enough to get this through the proper channels earlier on when he should have. That is the joke, Mr Smith. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. The contrary opinion will say no. The ayes have it. A party vote is called for. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 32 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. 12 votes opposed. Māori Party. Two votes opposed. At New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour.
The eyes are 61, the nose are 60. Uh, this bill will be read a first time. Housing Legislation Amendment Bill, first reading. Uh, members seeking leave? Yep. I, seek leave. Uh, I think you're taking a point of order. Then oh, you're sorry, you're right. Leave. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Uh, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave for the bill to be divided uh, into two bills, as described uh, in my amendment, for the bill containing part one to be set down for a second reading forthwith, and for the bill containing part two to be referred to the Social Services Committee to be reported by 25th of November 2016. Is there any objection to that process? Yes, there is. There is, a, there is objection. Um, this bill is set down for second reading forthwith. Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, I move that this housing legislation amendment bill be now read a second time. Mr Speaker, this bill is a litmus test as to whether people want houses to be over people's heads or whether people just